Fair Use Act and Appropriation. So we just talked a whole lot about copyright and model and property releases and all this, but <laughs> there are times when you can use copyrighted material without a license. So all of that stuff you thought I just said, well, with this, it kind of gets thrown out the window in very specific situations, okay? So the Fair Use Act, as part of our right to freedom of expression, copyrighted material can be used without a license. Uh, so here's a direct link to the Fair Use Act from copyright.gov. And um, if you get involved with a Fair Use Act uh, legal battle, uh, the courts will basically look at this stuff to these four factors to decide whether you have fair use to use the, the copyrighted material. And um, there is no way to really tell completely uh, what the court ruling will be. It's not a black and white type of situation. Every single case uh, is on its own, okay? So the four things that they look at is the purpose and character of the use, include, including whether the use is of a commercial nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes. So if um, a major company decided to use um, a snippet of a song for their their advertisement, which would be commercial use, then it would probably not be fair use. Now, you as an artist, if you decided to use that same, same snippet as part of a video um, or as sampling, for example, then it would be fair use. Okay, so there are very, uh, you know, there's a fine line there but this line isn't that fine. Commercial nature, you, you're getting paid, you're doing an advertisement, or is it for nonprofit, you're not making money, is it educational, okay? <clears throat> nature of the copyrighted work, okay. Um, so what this says is this factor analyzes the degree to which the work that was used relates to a copyright's purpose of encouraging creative expression. So, did, is the project that you're working on, that you use that snippet of the song, are you expressing something creative? Are you doing something that says something about, um, you know, a certain topic or something? All right, amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. So how much of that song did you use? Did you use the most important part or is it just a little part that's not as important? Um, did you use too much or too little? Did you use enough to get your point across? So that all comes into play. And then the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. So let's say you use that snippet of the song to say something that was really controversial or damaging um, and then people think, oh well, I am not going to use a product or I'm not going to listen to that band anymore. Well, then that could be a negative impact on the market or the value of that song. So that's where you could get in a lot of trouble. Uh, these are very, you know, in a way subjective, but a court decides all this stuff. All right. So let's go back for a sec here and let's talk about different uh, examples of appropriation where the Fair Use Act did come into play. So one famous one is the Hope poster controversy. So let's check this out. <clears throat> so the Hope poster was created by an artist, um, Shepard Ferry, back when Obama was running for president. Okay, And so the issue was that uh, he created this poster and the Associated Press, uh, an Associated Press photographer, had taken this photograph and so they sued the artist saying that he copied it, that he didn't have a right to. And he said, hey, I changed it enough that it is, um, it's okay. It should be okay. All right. So they went back and forth for a while. And, uh, you know, the Associated Press said that he did not actually um, use any creativity, that it was a form of computerized paint by numbers. Well, Shepard Ferry thought that, that was not fair, that he in fact had uh, created artwork for it. Um, so this argument that they use here is interesting uh, because basically they're saying that if Shepard Ferry 
had, instead of using Photoshop to create this, had done a painting instead, then it would have no, not been a big deal. But because he used um, a computerized version of painting, uh, that it was copying. Okay. Now, I believe, well, let's see, where is it? Um, in the end, the two sides agreed to work together to share the rights to make the posters and the merchandise, um, you know, commercially attractive for both of them. They were all going to, they were both going to make money off of it. Okay. Um, the AP was pretty mad because they're saying that he made $400,000 in sales. And so they wanted a chunk of it. So they came to terms with it. Um, I personally believe that if he had taken it all the way to court, that he'd actually would have won. I don't know for sure. That's just my opinion. Okay. So another example, oh, I'm sorry, before I go on, further appropriation of the poster. So, all right. So he went ahead and did that. And then another artist decided to use his poster and appropriate it further. Uh, let's see. Where'd it go? Oh no, where'd it go? Okay, well, sometimes things don't happen how you want them to happen. Uh, let's see if... It just needs to reload. No, it's not. The image is gone. Okay, let's see if I can find it real quick. Um, let me go up to... Sometimes this happens, all right? Let's see, yes, we scan, scan. Okay, here's the image I was talking about. Okay, so um, another artist went ahead and appropriated Shepard Fairey's image by putting it into this. He said, yes, we scan, deal with it. Obey us, control, we are watching you. And this is very much um, like Shepard Fairey's style. So his artwork was then used by another artist. Now I very much doubt that Shepard Fairey's going to sue them because the same thing happened to him, right? <laughs> so um, this is an example of how artists steal from each other. Um, or another nicer way of saying is uh, inspired by each other. <laughs> All right. So let's get back over here to the lecture. Um, now, like I mentioned before, sampling is appropriation. All right. Um, here's an example, which is one of my favorite examples because I love both songs. So first of all is the Beastie Boys. I'm going to start it. Okay, you hear that epic drum beat going? little quick uh, record slide and then they start rapping over it well that epic drum beat was actually taken from a much older song from Led Zeppelin when the levee breaks okay so you can see where um, you know the beginning both sampled uh, well not this one, this is the original, but the beginning starts with that drum beat, and um, on the Beastie Boys version, it goes to rapping. In the original version, it goes to this wicked guitar. Um, I love both songs, so when either of them come on the radio, I never know which one's coming up. <laughs> but you know, sampling happens all the time. Um, one of, uh, a very current example is one of Cardi B's new songs, um, I Like It. Uh, that has that song, I like it like that, that's an old song, okay, that is sampling, but no one's getting sued about it. Uh, now, people do get sued if they're not given proper credit a lot of times, but, you know, she's changed it enough where it is called, it is appropriation. Um, another form of appropriation is video appropriation, uh, vidding or political remixes. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little snippet of this one. It does have some explicit material, but I won't, you know, show you enough of that. If you want to watch the whole thing, like I said, it is available in my lecture. Um, but this was a video or a vid 
bidding done by Professor Lyons, who teaches at Fresno State. And he has actually testified in front of the Supreme Court in support of bidding being considered fair use. So let's watch a little bit of this. Uh, lately, I've been listening to a lot of Jay Z. If you're having bank problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems. That's not one. I got protesters saying. Okay. <laughs> so he um, took clips of news footage. So obviously, he didn't take any of this video, but he took clips of different news footage and different words and cut it all together along to the beat of another song. So, and that's all because he's trying to make his political statement about what's happening. All right. So this is considered fair use. All right. So um, arguments for and against appropriation. Um, I'm not going to wa watch these videos with you right now. This is actually going to be part of your discussion um, post for this week. I'm going to have you guys watch two videos. The first one is going to be about Richard Prince, who is one of the most controversial appropriation artists of our time. Um, his most current work is actually um, taking Instagram photos that he has um, commented on, and then he screenshots them. And let's see if the photos come up. Uh, 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 there was a nice wide shot. Well, that's the thing that kind of ruins things sometimes on the internet, right? So anyways, he takes these Instagram photos, he sees Instagram photos, he comments on them, then he takes a screenshot, and he enlarges them to a huge size and sells them in galleries. Um, let me see if I could find, let's see, uh, Richard Prince Instagram. Okay, so here are some images of his gallery shows. Literally, Instagram posts blown up to a huge size, and then he's selling them for $90,000 each. <laughs> Insane. So people were super pissed about it. Um, but he has made his entire artistic career off doing stuff like this. Um, now, that was a big issue, and guess what? He got taken to court for it. And he, they ended up ruling that, in fact, it was not fair use, okay? Um, fair use not found. So he cannot show that work anymore. All right. So that first video, when you watch it, might make you a little mad. <laughs> not going to lie. Um, but artists have been copying each other forever. It's just kind of what happens. Like I said earlier, you can call it copying, you can call it being inspired. Um, so then I want you to also watch this other video. Um, it's this great, uh, I love this art assignment. It's made by PBS and it's called The Case for Copying. That kind of gives you the other side of the story. So you're going to watch both of these videos and then you're going to um, comment in the discussion board on what you think. Do you think appropriation and fair use is fair? Do you think it's not fair? Sometimes? Maybe not? I don't know. I want to know what you guys think.